Uh, welcome once again, everybody. I welcome all of you. And this is the lecture number three of the deep learning course. And in this session, we are going to talk about something more mathematical in terms of the machine learning. And we are going to see some important mathematical uh, convergence proof that are going to be useful at the later point of time in, into our classes. All right. So um, before starting my session, uh, two things that we are going to do into this particular session. First, I'm going to introduce you a basic model that uh, how you can apply some kind of machine learning thing. And another thing is that I'm going to show you that there is a convergence proof that this method, the method that I'm going to talk today is going to converge. This particular method that I'm going to talk about with respect to the machine learning would be also be applied into the uh, into the um, into the same way uh, into the perceptrons that are going to come at the later point of time into our classes. So the same thing we would be again seeing and uh, the same thing would be, would be utilized at the later point of time also. Before starting my lecture, I just wanted to introduce you this particular website once again that we have deep learning course website. Here you can find out one more name that is the name of the TA. Palash Agarwal is a TA for us. And you can find out his uh, email ID. And if you need any help, you can write him. First thing. Second thing that if you see on the lab sessions, so you can see that there are seven lab sessions are planned. Okay, seven lab sessions are planned. First one is a self-paced. So there is a video and there is also a uh, Google uh, Collab notebook. So you please access this. And if you know the Python, you are good into the Python, you need not to go into that. But otherwise, you please go and uh, see this and do the exercises so that you are good in, you are at least able to go ahead with the Python. We have last time, you know, when into the last offering of this particular course, all these seven labs were uh, scattered across the complete uh, semester. But this time, we have actually done, uh, and we want this, that all these labs should happen uh, before the mid semester so that uh, you uh, have a good grasp of all the concept in terms of the executing the thing. So you can see that the lab one, lab two, lab three, seven labs are there. First lab is actually very important. That actually gives you the background of the machine learning and uh, uh, tells you that how to set up and deploy the environments. Then multi-layer perceptron, CNN and the image segmentation, NLP, RNN and, and GANs, different kind of concept we are going to introduce into the lab. Uh, Palash Agrawal would be actually uh, conducting all these lab sessions and uh, you must attend all these lab sessions. So seven lab sessions, they are, they are planned from 11 a.m. to for the, what we expect that it is going to take only two hours. So the first lab is going to start from the 22, that is going to be tomorrow, 11 a.m. to um, uh, 1 p.m. So you must be having the free time at this thing. Recording would also be well below over here. But I suggest that please attend the lab sessions. And before the first of uh, fifth of March, you would be able to get the full understanding of this particular uh, arena that the what are the different things are there into the deep learning domain. And you would be able to write the code because all these codes would be given to you. Assignment two would be based on this. OK, there would be some problem statement that you can pick up and uh, that could be individual also. Assignment two, you can, it would be a programming assignment and you would be doing some interesting tasks based on these uh, things that we are going to show you into this particular uh, lab sessions. Okay. So very important thing is this. The first is the announcement that please by yourself go and uh, and see the lab zero. It is your thing. Most of us, uh, somebody has done something. You can speak as well, please. Sir, how can we use recorded lectures? How can we see recorded lecture? Okay. Uh, Rohit, uh, I'm sorry that I was, I have till now not updated. I was very busy these days, but by the Sunday, all these three lectures would be available on our course website itself. So the here itself, there would be a link for the video. As you can see that into the lab session, you can see now, you know, there is a video and then the link. Similarly, there would be a link for the PDF document and the video. And the same thing would be here. And by the Sunday, all these lectures would be there. And then we would uh, continue with our uh, same pace that whenever there is a class the same day most probably the things are going to be uploaded okay so any questions on that any question on this particular part that we are going to conduct the lab session it is starting from tomorrow the time is 11 a.m to 1 and uh, every week something is going something interesting is going to come and uh, after that 
I think before the 20, after the lab that is going to happen on the 26th of February, you would be getting your assignment number two, that is going to be a programming assignment. Assignment one, very soon we would float, and that is going to be learning about the latex, and that is very easy assignment. Maybe uh, not more than two weeks time would be given to you. Here you would be given, I think, here again you would be given two weeks time. Try to learn, ask all the questions so that you become equipped by executing the thing let me focus let me uh, bring your focus once again on this particular lab one in this lab one we are going to talk about many machine learning algorithm also their deployment that how can you deploy them so you are good to go and you can deploy your model anywhere all right so hope it is clear to you now let us go to our course our today's session so in this session as i told you that we are going to talk about the uh, our continue our discussion with the machine learning uh, framework that what is there and we are also going to see the see mathematically why this is going to work make sense all right so uh, let me go and uh, do a small recap last class we were talking about a small problem that was a credit approval problem credit approval means somebody is coming to your bank and he want to he he is providing his information and now you want to tell uh, that uh, whether his uh, loan application should be granted or not so we can say that two classes are there plus one and minus one positive and negative two classes we have uh, so there is a question will we use uh, m loose for the development so we we are going to use the python only and the base uh, sir i am asking if we can use ml ops for uh, deployment of the models so we'll we'll see that that would be there yeah okay so anything else any any more questions okay so let us go to the technical detail first uh, the thing that i wanted to highlight over here is this that we are in hand we have a particular problem that is a credit approval problem so when um, our setting is this that we have a database on this database we know that for these people the credit was approved and this was disapproved for some of the people some of the people it was plus one plus one minus one minus one so related attributes were given to us this was a database that uh, that was given to me and uh, we want to learn by this and we want to develop a model and then when a new person is coming to me new person is coming to me we we extract his information and put this information to this model and want to get that whether the answer is plus one or minus one this is our overall setting uh, okay so in this particular kind of setting i want to tell you something that is very interested here interesting here let's assume that some person uh, let's assume that only two data point uh, data uh, thing uh, data attributes are there x1 and x2 for sake of simplicity only x1 and x2 only two data uh, attributes are there one side we say that the, here is it in x1 another side we say x2 some person came his uh, loan was approved he have provided the value of x and y and let's assume that he he is here okay based on the value of x and y x x1 and x2 we can put it here some other person came he have some value of x1 and some value of x2 based on and his were also approved let me put it here some person who was negative i can put it here i can put it here so let's assume that data is linearly separable for the sake of simplicity only let's assume that this is what the data is so if this is the data what should be the model very simple model any any linear model is going to work if we can find out the equation of this particular line somehow if we can find out the equation of this particular line so what we can do with that so we can any new point if whenever a new point is going to come you find out whether this point is above this particular line or below this particular line and then we can say that whether this item is positive or negative make sense okay i wanted to tell you this thing be with me if i change this data by doing this how can i do this i have added something to the x1 added something to the x2 whether the classification problem has changed yes or no whether the classification problem has say, cha changed no if i take it here whether the classification problem has changed no whether i change it here problem changes or no no the problem has not changed once again if i do this i multiply by a number 
uh, all the values are for x are multiplied by something whether the pro classification problem had changed the classification problem that you had earlier whether is it is it the same kind of classification problem or whether you say that the problem becomes more difficult or anything is the same problem yes or no same problem yes or no yes it is the same problem because you know that again here also you can find out the line okay if i if i rotate a bit uh, can i rotate it if i rotate it a bit is it going to be a change something so these are some of the fine transformations that i'm going to apply on my data if even if you apply some kind of a fine transformation such as uh, rotation rotation translation or scaling it is not going to have any uh, significant effect any any effect on the kind of the problem that uh, you were earlier solving make sense yes okay all right so if this is if you are agreeing with me then let's assume my data was this let's assume my data was this okay let's assume my data was this so before applying a machine learning model can i do this do this means what all the values are positive when the data was here some values were negative some values were positive some attribute value were negative some attribute values were positive now if i do like this what does it mean that now all the values are positive i can safely assume that all the values are positive without loss of generality without changing of the problem yes or no please type yeah you you enjoy okay yes you can do like that okay if you uh, agree with this so i can also do one more thing i can say that what is the what is the maximum value of x like i can find out what is the maximum value of x1 so maximum value of x1 is this what is the maximum value of x2 and maximum value of x2 is this so if the maximum value of x1 is this and maximum value of x2 is this so can i always uh, always multiply with the max uh, always divide all the values that are there with respect to your data with the value that i am going to get a maximum value so that the max this particular distance become one this particular distance also becomes one can i can i transform the data into this particular way yes okay what would be the uh, what would be the advantage by doing this actually most of the time when you say that if you have a data so the range of x1 may be much higher as compared to the range of x2 so if you do these kind of things so all the things are going to be now all the attributes are given the same kind of weights and the dimension the therefore the convergence the model that you are going to apply at the later point of time is going to be better make sense all right we are going to use this thing later point of time so right now let me let me go ahead with the my slide so in the last class we have seen that uh, if you have an item and you have defined that uh, these are the these are the property that are going to be there so we have seen that we are going to apply uh, and uh, as we have seen that x1 could be account balance x2 could be salary xn could be age we have seen in the last class okay so we have also seen that we we can apply uh, allow, uh, we can uh, find out some kind of weight that how my, much weight i want to give the x1 how much weight i want to give to the x3 x1 x2 x3 and then we can come up with the equation that uh, w1x1 plus uh, w2x2 plus uh, w3x3 if this value is greater than from some threshold i am going to say that i am going to approve this transaction otherwise i am going to deny or reject this thing this we have we have seen in the last class we have also seen that this uh, this equation can fit further be simplified to this uh, this thing where we say that i am going to take the threshold into into the left hand side and uh, then we only need to check the what is the sign we need not to do any comparison with the threshold so only is checking the sign is required and then we have also seen that it would be nice to introduce a slack variable maybe x0 and uh, therefore uh, by this we can say that threshold also becomes a kind of parameter for me and then we can safely write that this equation where there was a threshold and uh, kind of it was not looking good formula only one summation term is going to suffice and we can write that we can write the uh sign of this particular quantity 
in the last class we have also seen that uh, if uh, we represent uh, the weights this weights vector that is going to be w0 plus w1 dot 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 wn and this uh, item as a x0 x1 dot dot xn so as a vector then we can say that what is the w transpose x w transpose x is again going to be the term by term multiplication that can be represented by this particular nice looking formula we just say that w transpose x it is enough last class we have seen this so we were at this particular point point in the last class any questions here are of you all, all of you are okay yes uh wait okay now let us see this particular function once again we more closely and uh, let me once again bring this particular formula to you that what is this thing can you recognize this thing that what is this if you want to find out that what is the sign of this particular quantity what does it mean uh actually if uh, as i told you earlier that let's assume for sake of clarity so that we can draw it somewhere i say that x has only two value x1 and x2 we can draw it into the two dimensional space so this is going to be something i is equal to 0 to n then it is going to be w0 x0 where x0 is 1 plus wn x1 plus w2 x2 kind of this kind of formula it would be and uh, we want to find out that what is the sign and if this is the formula so they would be having some value na let us put some value w0 is 3 and uh, let's say that w0 is 3 w1 is equal to 2 2x1 w2 is equal to let's assume 5 5x2 if i write like this what is this uh okay so it comes out to be that if x2 is equal to 0 then x1 is equal to 3 by if i put x x1 is equal to minus 3 by 2 x1 is equal to x2 x1 is equal to minus 3 by 2 then it then this particular value becomes zero on the same uh, on the same way if uh, x1 is equal to zero if x1 is equal to zero then x2 is equal to minus 3 by 5 somewhere here then it is going to be zero this equation looks like this kind of line this equation comes out to be this particular line and if i want to find out the sign okay so if i put for example when when you say that x2 is equal to 0 and x1 is equal to minus 3 by 2 if you increase this 3 by 2 what is going to be that this value is going to be positive because we have just checked that on what value it is 0 the equation comes out to be a equation of line so if the x1 is greater than this thing where is the x1 greater than this uh, minus 3 by 2 x1 is greater in this particular if you come into this particular direction x1 is actually greater similarly uh if you your y is greater than, uh, if x2 is greater than some specified quantity that you can find out from here uh, once again so this particular area this equation is going to be positive are you, are you able to get that this particular equation is positive into this particular side this equation is positive into this particular side okay all right so if it is positive into this particular side so what is going to happen into the below side what is here this equation is negative this side this equation is a negative equation okay so without going to this uh, any equations you have okay so if you want to uh, do a interpretation of whatever things we have done you can say that sir looks like that there is a this particular thing this particular equation actually let me just quickly remove this and tell more formally that this equation which we were few minutes talking about this particular equation that we were actually talking about this particular equation represents what a line one side positive things are there another side negative things are there okay are you with me yes or no yes sir yeah okay okay so in the two dimension we have seen that it was a line it was a line into the two dimension and space and uh, similarly if the number of dimensions are high then it becomes a hyperplane two sides one is a positive another is a negative we can say that plus one and minus one so we can say like that let me pick a small example for you in the last class also we have actually come to this and we have no, but we could not discuss let's assume the data is like this okay forget about this line just consider this point so plus 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 these are the positive point these are the negative points okay so 
what this says let's assume that there is a line somehow we have set the values of w so that this is the line okay this is the line we find we can, can we find out the values of w such that uh, this line can be drawn definitely for a, we can if there is a line we can find out the related w's so if there is a w so we can use it for the classification if we use for the classification this point has a problem this point would be because upper, upper thing should be positive this becomes negative similarly this was a positive point and it become negative so this is a line which does some kind of errors make sense if we can change we if we can, i don't know that what need to be done but if somehow we can we do something that because with this particular line we have some w's okay if we do something so that we get w dash such that the line becomes this our problem is solved okay we can we can find out the right parameter if we can do this we can uh, we can find out the right model yes or no here we are assuming my data is linearly separable okay we are assuming the data is linearly separable so if uh, we can do this thing then we can take a liberty saying that start with any w start with any w and then you convert in such a way so that you be keep becoming better and at the end you will reach to this particular point and your all the problems would be solved make sense all the problems is solved means you actually find out the right values of right w's and you have the right model all right let us see closely that uh, let me let us consider this w w w0 w1 w2 wn uh, you know that few minutes back we have talked about that w0 may be minus 3 w1 may be 2 w2 could be 3 they, they are going to have actually a values okay these w's are going to have a value so into your uh, into your space a value means what a point if i specify that a, a specific a special value it is going to be a point point or you can say that it is a vector it is going to be a vector so w's are actually what they are they are vectors okay and uh, what about this what uh, and what is this this is my decision boundary is there any relationship between this decision boundary and this vector let me tell you that the relationship is that that this particular vector would be normal to the plane uh, plane of linear decision boundary means this vector that we are right now talking about would be perpendicular on this particular plane w would be perpendicular to the hyperplane separating hyperplane oh what i'm telling how how it is possible okay let me tell you that how it is possible few minutes back we have seen that if the data is here we can we can we can take it we can take it anywhere if data is here and line is here okay if the separating line is here we can take it anywhere so i say that take it one minute so take it here so that it passes like this can you always do that yes always we can do it few minutes where we have just mentioned okay now this vector if i take this vector if i take this vector and try to plot over here oh, once again if i okay if i take this vector and plot it here okay and let me just focus on this okay let me find any point on this particular any point on this particular plane so this was the plane or any point on this particular plane and the point would be maybe p0 p1 p2 dot 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 pn this point would be it would also be a vector this would also be a vector and uh, this vector is w0 w1 w2 wn this is another vector weight weight vector that we are going to talk what is the dot product between these two things what is the dot product between these two vectors they are going to be you can say right like this p0 w0 plus p1 
P1 W1 plus P2 W2 dot dot dot. What is this thing? What is this thing? You know that if it is a line and it is passing through zero, this is this value is going to be zero. Because because you know that anything anything that actually lies on this particular line is going to satisfy this particular equation because it, this is the equation of the line. This is the equation of the line. So and and it is going to be zero. What, what does it signifies? It signifies that the angle between them is 90 degree because this signifies that what is the cos 90? What is the cos 90? If you want to find out the uh, if you want to find out the the angle between two vector and if the angle is theta, you know that it is the dot product between p and w divided by p mod of p and mod of w. This is the standard formula we have seen from the class uh, class 12 mathematics. This particular quantity, this particular quantity, this particular quantity is actually zero. So this this completely becomes zero. Where the cos is cos is on which point the cos is zero on 90. So it means that the that the angle between these two vectors is actually 90. Why I wanted to tell you why I am telling this? I am telling you this because you consider that there is a there is a hyperplane and on this hyperplane there is a lid and you are actually moving this particular lid because you are what you are changing if you can change the values of w you are actually changing this point from here to there and if if it if you are changing here your uh, your vector would be your hyperplane would be perpendicular to this thing so vector becomes this if you choose this if you choose another point if you choose another another point your hyperplane would be this if you choose this thing your hyperplane would be this so by changing these different at the different locations you can change this particular hyperplane to the right direction what does it mean that there is a way that you, if you can change the values of w if you can change the values of w your this line can be rotated and it can be become like this till now i have not talked about that how to change this value till now i have not talked about that how to change this value i am just telling that if you change the values of w then by this you are changing the value of uh, uh, this uh, separating hyperplane and you can make it correct also because now you have a handle if you can change the values of w you can change the value of hyperplanes and then you can make the things correct any questions on that all right so we have seen that uh, if we can change the values of w's then we are going to be better one more thing i wanted to tell since we are at this particular point you should understand this thing also that let's assume that i have picked this particular value of w okay all of you know that if this is the w then then it means that this is the hyperplane that i have this is the hyperplane i have so if i choose this w is it a different w or not is it the same same w it is a different w because this is a different value this this point is going to have a different value this point is going to have a different value so whether the hyperplane would be same for this particular point also yes the, the hyperplane would be same same way if i if i put another point here this would also be the same so there are multiple w's actually that can that can define this particular hyperplane so ultimately actually actually what is the what is happening over here that if you find any right w so if you multiply two two with that two w three w five w hundred w all these things minus five w all these things are going to be your right w's so can i ask this that how many w's are there which are actually correct going to give you the correct classification there are infinite such thing infinite such w's are there so but ultimately we want only one okay so how can we say that i uh, i want to get one it would be nice that if you can if you if we can apply one more condition we say that the we need that w which has a mod equal to one if i say that uh, because any one of is, is going to because you know that on a line there could be infinite point and all of them are going to be correct so i say that i'm going to pick that one whose norm is going to be of the size one okay so therefore in most of the cases we also say that whenever there is a w we, the mod of w is going to be one we are we just fix it that mod of w is going to be one by this we we force our system to give us one value 
otherwise infinite possible values could be given to us all right so any questions any confusions so what does the dub double mod signify say again sorry so the double mod sign okay so uh, okay it is it is just a norm na if if w is equal to for example uh, it is going to be a vector such as w0 w1 w2 wn so double means that you it is going to be under root of w0 square plus w1 square it is just length okay w3 square dot 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 as i mentioned na here if you have this so we want the length to be one so it is just uh, the norm the length of this particular vector make sense so could you just repeat how the uh, dot product would be zero i missed that line uh, dot product uh, would be zero okay so you have an equation okay you, you have an equation because of this w you have an equation so any point that actually lies here would be able to specify would be able to uh, if as i told you that i picked this point on the this particular line so yes. if you put this point into this particular equation what would be the value if you put this point the value would be positive if you put this point the value would be negative but if you put this point what would be the value it would be zero because the line is on okay. the point is on the line okay okay sir okay okay please ask the question so it is uh, it looks like to you simple but may have something that you need to ask okay mostly all these things are coming from your uh, uh, class 12 background only so nothing difficult for you but please ask that if you don't understand okay okay so it is perfectly fine to ask the question and uh, i welcome all of you so once again um, till now on what page we are we know that uh, we need the value of w vector and uh, if we change this value w vector in such a way so that it becomes better we would be able to find out the right separating hyperplane now the question comes i am going to answer the second question that how to find out how to change the value how to change the value i am going to answer this question how to change the value of w okay so answer is this once again you have a database in database there are multiple examples that are given to you and this is the database that is given to you you pick any random values of w random are you if you don't like it put all the w is equal to 0 0 0 you start by this and uh, then the, there would be an equation and if you put this equation into uh, and use this particular because any any random value or any any value that you are going to use as a w's if it is going to give you a equation on this equation you can check for all the data point what is what is their classification so randomly also there some could be correct so you can see that some could be correct mostly would be wrong we expect but randomly it is possible that some could be correct if all of them are wrong i am very happy because if all of them are wrong then it means that i can just reverse the uh, output and i would be correct everywhere but if some of them are wrong then i have to change something okay try to understand if a if a model is has a 0% accuracy the same model has a 100% accuracy make sense okay so you started by taking the random values of w's and you have actually applied this value on your database and try to see that what is the classification that you obtained by applying this this formula somewhere you got that you are correct okay then equation then my procedure is for all the cases where you are wrong for all the cases for all the cases where you are wrong you are going to change the values of w one by one hello yes sir understood okay thank you 
so i was writing something and uh, my internet i i can see that i was not coming so let me see that yeah it is again up okay all right so what i was telling i was telling the algorithm my my i am going to tell you the technique the technique is this that you pick the random one you pick the random one number pick random random w number 1 second apply on data for all wrong ones you update using this formula you update the w w i how many weights you have w0 w1 dot 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 different w uh, w n weights are there Ith weight you are going to update by W i plus alpha time y k x i k. What is k? This is the this is the place where I am wrong, na? I am wrong because how many data items I have? M data items I have wrong. So I pick which one is wrong. Kth one is wrong. For that data item. For that data item, I am going to change the value of W by saying that W i is equal to W i plus. Once again, yeah, W i is equal to W i plus alpha time. Y k. What is Y k? Y k means what is the correct classification? Why this? Because we know you know that if you pick any kth data item, let's assume that I pick the kth data item, it has two part. What is x and what is y? Okay, so. i am going to use the yk and alpha alpha is a number that i am going to multiply i am going to tell something very soon about this okay what is happening and i am going to use this x uh, to multiply over here x i because i th because you know that uh, there are uh, uh, i different uh, x is also you know that x x1 x2 dot dot uh, x uh, i and uh, x n n because it's a multivariate thing so i'm going to use the ith one to multiply over here this is how i'm going to multiply to get the right value this is the formula i'm just telling about this why from where it came what is the justification all these things are going to come next make sense whether this part is clear i am going to tell you why it is coming but right now whether this part is clear that what is the algorithm algorithm is correct that for all the wrongly classified thing i am going to modify this thing using this particular equation what is this equation there is an alpha that says that uh, how fast i am going to convert how fast i wish to convert if the value of alpha is large then you can convert very fast if the value of alpha is small then you can you would be taking the smaller steps and uh, the time needed is going to be large definitely you would like to have the larger alpha but there is a problem let me give you let's assume that you are coming from delhi to pilani okay so you know that it is a 200 kilometers so in one step let's assume that you take 20 kilometer loop okay in one step you can take 20 kilometers you put the alpha in such a way that you take 20 kilometers so after 10 steps you would be where you would be in front of the bits pilani gate and then into next step what would happen you would go 20 km away so you are out you are not entered into, you have not entered into the bits pilani what would you do you would again take another step but again the step is 20 km you could come in front of the gate again you cannot come inside so choosing the value of alpha is that's why is very uh, uh, important task you have to do and what should be the right value of alpha if you have chosen the alpha to be uh, for example 100 meters so from the gate you can enter to the bits pilani okay but then this this time here you have to spend much time so there are other methods also that takes the how can we adaptively change this thing so we are later in the later classes these thing would also come to us any questions on that so i have two questions one is that this isn't should be plus or it should be minus in w i it is, yeah it is it is plus here because we are i'm just assuming that we are subtracting the error mm, we we'll talk very soon yeah let us let us see this and what yeah. is this k whether it should be uh, because is it that you know for mkth value uh, for 
all the M1, M2, M3, uh, we have to have an iteration for every W, am I right? Yes, yes. So what I what I mentioned is here that you had a database, and in which let's let's pick the kth example from my database, kth one from my database, and let's assume that it was wrong. If this was wrong, so I would find out what is the x part and what is the y part. Y part we know that it is going to be plus one or minus one. The value is going to be plus one or minus one only. We have we are into this scenario where we are telling that the classification is either plus one or minus one. Y values also have the multiple thing. Y uh, x one sorry x x values have x one x two dot dot x x m and different values and different attributes. So if and w how many w's are there? W zero w one dot dot w n. So if I am updating ith w, then I would use ith thing and I would use this complete value to find out this particular quantity. Is it clear? So all the w all the w's are by this. They are updated. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, I just had one doubt. Like when you update this uh, uh, this wi with regards to the kth example, the previous uh, the previous like data points they also might change from by the change ah, equation. Yes, yes, yes. yes they also get changed. So that's why I am going to perform this operation multiple number of times. So first we pick the random w. Then we pick the who are the wrong. Then we update the w's and we keep updating this uh, this w again, 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 multiple after in the multiple iterations. In this session, oh, my same. plan is to show you that after doing sufficiently uh, large number of iterations, they, and that is upper bounded means it is not going to be have the infinite thing. You would be able to actually get that particular right w. Okay. You would okay. see this. Any more questions? All right, thank you. So let us try to understand that why this thing is going to uh, go, is go, going to work me. Okay, why it is going to work for me? So let us uh, let me let me say like this: that uh, what is the value of y and what is the value of y hat that my model is giving? What could be the value of y? It could be plus uh, plus one or minus one. Okay, if the value is plus one, my model could say what? Plus one or minus one? Okay. For minus one, the my model should could say plus one, and it could say minus one. Whether this table is clear to everybody? Okay, y hat means what my model is telling. Y means what is the actual thing? What is the actual thing? Okay, what is my model is telling? And uh, if if the item is positive, my model is also telling positive. So I'm happy, na? I don't have any problem. If Model is negative. My model um, item is negative. My model is also telling negative. I'm happy. I'm no problem. Okay. And let me tell you that my algorithm was this. For the misclassified examples, I am going to change. So I'm not changing the parameter when the when these cases are arising. Make sense? Now let us investigate other cases. When when y was positive, when actual thing was positive, and my things are negative. Okay. So what I was doing, I was doing that w is equal to w plus alpha time y into x. Okay, acha. Please be with me and tell me that can you can you assume that alpha is always positive? Yes, alpha is positive. Can you always assume x is always positive? We have seen now. We have we can translate the data in in always in all the cases. So x is also positive. What is the value of y? uh why is positive in this particular case why is positive okay so what is happening into this particular case that the value of w is increasing am i right yes or no yes sir yeah so let us see the second case when the y is negative when the this y is negative again with the same logic x is positive alpha is positive my my weight is going to what it is going to decrease okay Let us investigate more. Oh, uh, so we take that alpha is positive only right now because we are considering a first value to be zero for all w, right? No, no. Alpha is uh, is a learning parameter that how fast you are learning. So it would be only positive number. 
how okay. fast we are learning okay right? so it is independent of whatever we take the first value of w like Correct. the yeah. yeah it would always be there so i as i told you that in the later classes we would see that how we can uh, change it adaptively also but right now let us think okay. that it is fixed all right okay so if uh, let me tell you this thing you would be very happy to see this positive value thing was positive my equation is giving the negative value once again what is this equation w0 x0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 this value is negative okay why why this is the classification i'm just consider this particular case okay here the classification is negative means this value is what this value is negative so how can i make it positive how can i make it positive if i increase this value of w because let's assume that all the x are positive we, we, we right now we assume that all the x are positive so if it is a negative value how can i make it positive if i increase the value of these w's now if you increase the value of w your value which is right now negative is going to be positive yes or no yes sir are you able to see this right now my uh, answer is negative because this particular quantity is negative if i want to make this quantity positive definitely i have to increase the value of weights so this is uh, and here you can see that in this particular case my weight was increasing let us consider the second case my output is plus 1 means this is positive and our what should be it should be negative so how can i make it negative if i reduce the value of w's if i reduce the value of w you can see that the value is reducing okay so this is the this is a kind of uh, intuitive uh, idea that why it is going to work so, so this is not going to be the final thing okay make sense any questions on that happy yes no one is happy <laughs> yes sir <laughs> okay so uh, so you are happy then uh, let us uh, let us go ahead and uh, let us change our mood a bit so few minutes back we have talked about that uh, if we know the value of w if some item is given to you you find out what is the sign of w transpose x and it is going to give you the your answer if it is positive then item is positive otherwise the item is going to be negative so you know that what is the y transpose x you know that what is the y transpose x y transpose x if i ask you that what is the y multiplied by y transpose x and what i am telling sorry okay so once again uh, you know that what is w transpose x okay if i say that consider this quantity where w transpose x is multiplied by y what is this value okay so there could be two cases when the y is positive and y is negative okay when the y are we can say like this that there could be two cases when my model is my model is going to be the going to give you the my model is going to give me the correct classification and wrong classification there could be two cases if my model is going to give me correct classification means what that if the y is plus 1 my model is going to also going to give me plus 1 means w transpose x is actually positive if y is minus 1 means for negative example this w transpose x is going to be negative if i if you multiply this value with this value minus 1 multiplied with the something that is actually negative become positive when y is equal to positive 1 and this thing is also greater than 0 if you multiply y with w transpose x it becomes what it is become positive means if the classification is correct then y w transpose x is actually greater than 0 in the other case when my classification is wrong my classification is wrong when the y was plus 1 then this is going to be negative because it then only it can say that minus 1 if i multiply plus 1 with a negative thing positive if plus 1 is multiplied with a negative thing you get a negative value similarly into the other case when the y was minus 1 it was a wrong answer given by my model therefore w transpose x would be greater than 0 if i multiply this quantity with this quantity y into w transpose x is actually less than 0 so actually by doing this why i am telling this because by this we actually can get a very good kind of test that which item is correct or which item is wrong just find out the value of y transpose x 
If it is greater than zero, the classification is correct. If it is less than zero, the classification is wrong. Model classification is wrong. Please note, we are doing all these things when we are assuming that the model is a linear model. Any questions on that? Clear? Uh, this slide actually talks about the hyperplane and the normal vector that we have just few minutes back seen that actually the W is actually perpendicular to the plane. So this slide is with you. You can just try to find out. Now I'm going to discuss you a very important thing, but we have only 10 minutes time. Try to let me try to see that how much we can cover. So be with me for the next 10 minutes. OK, I will try to give you the complete details and be focused. OK, I want to give you the proof that that if I say that W is equal to W i is equal to W i plus alpha, alpha time y x i. So it is going to converge. It is at ultimately going to give you the right uh, value of W. Let me say that right value is W star because we started with the W. We don't know that what is the right value of W. So this is the, not the right W. Let me say that there is some right W that is a W star. OK, so uh, we actually uh, uh, we started from with some W and I'm going to update this this multiple number of time. And at the end, I'm going to get the W star into the finitely many number of steps. If I, I have to prove this. If provided the data is linearly separable, if the data is linearly separable, what I wanted to say that if the data is linearly separable, then this learning rule that we are actually talking about converges into the finitely many steps to what the right right thing. For this, I'm going to give you the proof. OK, so let's assume that this is the data that you have. Let's assume that this is the data, whether this data is linearly separable. Yes, you can see that the red points are here. Green points are here. It is linearly separable. So where is the right? Uh, where is a right uh, uh, separating hyperplane? Let's assume that this is a separating hyperplane. What is the equation? Let's assume that W star is its equation. We don't know. OK, so so let's assume that I have a database in this database. All these points are placed and I know that what is the value that is being given? What is the Y value is for the every X value and Y value is given to me. Let me find out a value and that is what is the value? What is the value of Y W transpose X? Can I find out this? It could be positive or negative. So can anybody tell that whether this value could be negative? Yes, because W, I don't know the, what is the value of W. So maybe we start with the wrong W. So some of the few minutes back we have seen, now, this was a test that uh, if this value is going to be what? This value is going to be positive if the item are correct. Otherwise, this value is going to be negative. So I'm asking about this value. So let me just focus on this particular W star transpose X into Y. Because this is the W star that I have. So if I want to find out that what is this value? So this value, because all the, because with respect to this particular plane, all these all the things are rightly classified. So what is the value that I'm going to get over here? Everywhere there would be some positive value. Make sense? Every value there would be some positive value. So there would be some point for this this value would be negative, uh, smaller. Sorry, because multiple positive values are there. One of them is going to be smallest. I don't know for when, but just for the sake of discussion, let me say that there is a point for with respect to that. This particular quantity is the smallest and this value is lambda. So my question is whether you can always find the value of lambda, yes or no? With respect to the W star, with respect to the W star, all these values are going to be positive for complete database. We know that because W star is a correct thing. So it is going to give you the right thing. If multiple positive numbers are given to you, you can always find out the minimum. So every time given a database, you can always find out the lambda. Yes or no? Can anybody write yes? OK. Uh, we can assume that W star is the right separating hyperplane that we want to find out. We can also understand that this particular, uh, the norm of this particular vector is going to be 1. Why? Because a few minutes back, I've told you that multiple W's are possible. And the best one, uh, we can always tell that I'm going to pick that one where the norm is going to be 1. We can safely assume that all the data points are also normalized. And therefore, the value of any of the x is actually less than 1. So we have, we have seen that if the value is there, we can always normalize. And the maximum value would be 1 only. Make sense? 
we have also discussed few minutes back that the value of w this is uh, uh, is positive for all the data items and therefore it has a some minimum value we can say the lambda let me tell you something right now you have the value w you are targeting to reach to the value of w star so you are going to change it okay you are going to change it how that you are going to say that w is equal to alpha plus y alpha time y x you are going to change this w to w plus alpha time y x you are changing to this particular value on multiple number of time you are going to change okay so let us try to understand that what is this quantity w multiplied by w star so you started with any w so what is the value of w is multiplied by w star my point is that if you update using this particular update rule you are increasing at least by alpha into lambda you are increasing at least by alpha into lambda how can i say that initially let the value is w transpose w star then you have changed this value you have updated this value by because w becomes w time alpha y w transpose this value is the same you take it inside w transpose w star and it is multiplied by over here you get alpha time w y w star t x we have seen few minutes back here we have written that the minimum value of this quantity is what lambda minimum quantity is lambda so the smallest value that can come over here is a lambda so this i can write that this particular value is greater than w transport w plus alpha lambda initially the value of before update the value was w transpose w star now the value becomes w transpose w star plus alpha lambda at least this much it would it could be increased more also this is the first thing that i wanted to tell second thing that i wanted to tell that the w that you started with when you increase it using this particular formula increases at least by alpha square at most i think it it increases at most by alpha square it cannot increase more than alpha square how can i prove this so let us start by taking the value of w w transpose and then i i am going to change it to new value by w plus alpha time uh, y x alpha time y x they are multiplied w is multiplied by over here it become w w transpose this is multiplied by two times two alpha y w transpose x this is multiplied and it becomes a square now please focus on this particular quantity very important quantity so w w transpose is the previous value two multiplied by alpha time y into x transpose x so this particular quantity you know that the, what is this quantity so this is the same kind of quantity but here it is not asterisk it is not asterisk so this quantity i am going to talk about what is this particular quantity this quantity is negative why it is negative because you are updating when you update the thing you only update the thing when the when your answer is wrong and when your answer is wrong then this point particular quantity is negative so if this is a negative quantity what is the maximum value maximum value of any negative quantity is what it is zero maximum quantity maximum value of any negative quantity is zero so this term you can neglect if you want to find out what is the maximum that is possible over here let's talk about this thing alpha square is a value y what is y square the value of y could be plus 1 and minus 1 y square becomes always 1 this is one what is x x transpose you know that the value of x is actually less than 1 so uh, if you multiply x with the x transpose it is going to be less than 1 only what is the maximum value possible it is 1 so here you see that this thing this vanishes and you say that this becomes 1 and this this is also 1 this is also 1 alpha square you can say that this particular quantity converges to w w transpose plus alpha square uh with this kind of understanding we have do two formula the first formula is this second formula is this we have just written this thing these two formulas over here okay what i wanted to tell at this particular moment is this that you started by a value of w you change it to something else because of your formula and uh, by this change you are actually increasing the value by alpha lambda in in your in your w you, your value is going to increase at least by alpha lambda so initially you have some value plus alpha lambda has been increased if you if you 
perform if you start from the w you keep increasing how many steps you can go ahead let's assume that you you update it k number of time so what is the final value this is multiplied by k okay and by this formula you know that the maximum value so you started uh, you 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 just focus on this particular point after this thing this value w transpose w star is actually how much it has increased something delta plus alpha lambda multiplied by k it is equal to this quantity if i if i remove this particular part this particular plus part if i remove then i can say that this quantity is actually greater than or equal to this quantity this is the equation that i have written over here okay so dot product uh, you need to find out the dot product at this particular moment you need to find out the dot product at this particular moment you know that the dot product can be represented by the norm matrix multiplication and norm and then comes the you know that there is a cauchy schwarz inequality that says that the absolute value of the dot product of the two vectors is less than the product of their length so this can be represented by individual length multiplication of individual length you know that this particular quantity is one and uh, therefore uh, if it remains that only this uh, is going to be only the norm of this particular quantity w only so norm of w and norm of w transpose is same so you can take the norm of w and norm of w as we have seen that it can be represented by the multiplication with the transpose and taking the under root it is multiplication with the transpose and taking the under root w transpose w by the second formula we see that every time it is going to increase not more than alpha square so if if k time we have increased it it is not going to be greater than k alpha square so this particular quantity is less than k alpha square so by we can combine these two steps and we can say that k alpha lambda is less than one minute k alpha lambda is less than under root k alpha square so k square alpha square lambda square is less than k alpha square here we can say that alpha is going to be cancel alpha square is going to be cancel so and k is also square going to be cancel you can say that k alpha k alpha is less than 1 you can say that k is less than 1 upon sorry it's not alpha it is uh, lambda sorry k lambda square okay it is 1 upon lambda square so by this you get that k is less than 1 upon lambda square k what is k how many time you have how many time you need to update the value once again let me let me put the light on this if you have a data then we know that based on the data you get the value of lambda and this particular algorithm says that you need not to update more than 1 upon lambda square number of time this is the proof that this update is not going to be forever after 1 upon lambda square number of updates this is going to converge this is the conversion proof so i think that's all for today next semester, next thing we can take it there's one more slide but that's not important so this is the conversion proof convergence proof of the this particular update algorithm thank you very much for joining this session any questions you are most welcome to ask i am sorry that i have taken 4 5 more minutes very sorry for that thank you thank you for joining